Howdy, with this video I want to go over the ML of the APA medical essay real quickly. Just kind of a brief overview, I don't want to spend 20 minutes on it yet. Uh, I'm doing this video on Wednesday, June 28th. Hopefully everybody got their drafts in last night. I just sent out the peer reviews. Uh, once you get those peer reviews in, uh, I'm going to look at them, make sure the, the commentary doesn't mislead the original writer. That might take me a few days. So in the meantime, you're, you're going to be working on journal 7 through 9, getting started on the next essay. And that's what I want to talk about is this uh, APA medical essay. Uh, the assignment sheet, you can see we're almost halfway through the course already. It, it goes fast. Um, no, nah, not course documents. Uh, we're going to come down to essay assignments. Uh, I'll move this up once we get there, but there's the APA medical research essay assignment. It's easier to see it if I download it. Alrighty. Uh, and this is kind of the, the, the big paper for the class. Uh, we're putting all, this re all these research techniques together. We're also going to start working with APA format a little bit. Any of you going into the medical field, uh, you're going to be doing APA in those, particularly those nursing courses. But even sociology, psychology uses APA format, right? Uh, but for this essay, you're going to write a 1300 word minimum narrative research essay discussing the experience of, so of someone you know, and this person can be yourself. Uh, with the medical topic of your choice in APA format. Uh, in other words, you're going to tell someone's story and put, you know, uh, uh, regarding how they had to deal with this medical issue and then put the research into the context of that story. Uh, and what that does is so if, if stu two students want to talk about breast cancer, uh, they're going to be two very different essays gonna, because they're going to be talking about two, two different people and different experiences probably. <clears throat> Uh, you note the word count doesn't include the title page, the abstract, and references page. Um, but basically, as you tell someone's story, you're going to be talking about a process. Uh, if you go down to the bottom of the assignment, uh, it kind of talks about how most medical conditions have some kind of process going with it. Uh, generally, you're happy, healthy, normal. Uh, then you get some symptoms. Uh, and all this is going to depend on your particular topic. Uh, like with ACL tears, there may not be a lot of symptoms. You, you know, you jump up to rebound the basketball, you come down, pop, and down you go, right? Um, other conditions like Alzheimer's, uh, there's a lot of symptoms uh, before you even get diagnosed, right? Uh, how do you know the difference between getting old and a serious medical condition? Um, but once you get those symptoms, somebody drags you to the doctor, uh, you get diagnosed, uh, then you might get into the causes. Again, it kind of depends. An ACL tear is like, well, you've landed funny on your knee. Uh, what causes Alzheimer's? It's a, it's, they're still working on that, right? Um, then once you get diagnosed, you get the treatment. Uh, then you get the results of the treatment. And then, again, everybody's essay is going to be a little bit different. Uh, hopefully the treatment cured it. Uh, but if not, you know, did you have to go for another treatment? And as you're starting to work on this and kind of outlining it, uh, you're going to have to start narrowing that topic down a little bit. Uh, you can't tell, you can't discuss 10 years worth of you know somebody's experience with Alzheimer's in a 1300 word essay. Uh, the, the essay is too short for you to get into detail about that. So you may have to pick, uh, discuss a particular uh, period in time. It might be with the, the struggle with the diagnosis. Uh, if they're in the late stages of Alzheimer's, you might talk about you know having to take care of someone in late stage, uh, the late, later stages of Alzheimer's, and all the decision the family has to make and what you're going to do there. Um, it doesn't have to be a life or death medical issue. Uh, I've had good ones on, on allergies. Uh, had a good one last semester on gluten allergies and the struggle with you know restaurants not taking the allergy seriously or you know going to a party and somebody slips you something accidentally and uh, so a lot of it was just dealing with the day to day of the disease. So uh, you can narrow these topics down in different ways, uh, but generally there is going to be that process of discovering you know what the problem is. Uh, and treating it. And then you're going to do some comparison, uh, comparing uh, the person's experiences to the research you find out there. Um, so, uh, and you can read all this. Uh, we're not going to have a three point thesis with this, uh, no five paragraph essay kind of format. Uh, should be getting a little beyond that by this point. Uh, at least half the word count should consist of that person's experiences. Uh, this is humanities course, right? So I'm interested in a human being who's going through the problem. Uh, some of you are more in the medical field and more on the science side of things where you're more interested in the disease. Uh, but for this class, I want to hear about that person's story. Uh, so make sure you're picking somebody you can interview and who is willing to talk about it. Uh, 
sometimes that can be hard. I've had students want to talk about their father's uh, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder uh, from their time in like in Iraq or something or Afghanistan. And all of a sudden, the, you know, the father doesn't want to talk about it because that's one of the <laughs> one of the problems with that condition is you kind of you, that feelings of isolation and not wanting to talk to people. Um, so be careful there. Make sure you talk to the person. Uh, we are going to share this in peer reviews, so don't write about anything you don't want other people in the class to know about. That, you know, that's not confidential. Um, <coughs> so you may have to go through a, a, a condition or two. Um, but again, don't think you have to. Uh, it has to be cancer or Alzheimer's. It, it can be uh, sports injuries uh, or, so, or something non-life threatening. Um, and you know, if any of you have a lot of you have children. Um, you know, to, to bear a child requires you to go through a fairly major medical situation, right? Uh, they don't just slide out. <laughs> you gotta, you know, all kinds of complications can happen. But if you want to talk about a pregnancy, you may have to limit it to uh, maybe a couple of months. Or uh, if you had tr trouble with the delivery, you may just focus on, you know, my, this might just be on delivering my child on this, uh, on this one or two, three, four days. Um, Hopefully it didn't take four days, but anyway. Um, but so some of the after, pro you know, the problems after the birth can be kind of significant. Um, but you should uh, reference at least three uh, authoritative sources. Uh, again, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, unless you get something super rare where just nobody's writing about it, it might end up being a problem. Uh, that's why we're going to do that annotated bibliography. If you can't find seven sources on your particular medical topic, that's a big red flag that you've gotten into some dark territory there. Uh, you should try and use at least two sources from the databases at the Northeast State Library. Uh, I want you to start there. That's what journal entry number nine is going to get you into. Uh, but after that, any reliable sources, and again, those database sources uh, lead you to other online sources. So they're, they're really neat, uh, 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 neat tools to use in, in medical research. Uh, generally, if you're get, getting a book about your topic, it's going to be out of date by the time it's published and you get it in your hands, but uh, it kind of depends on, on whatever the, the problem is. Um, but we'll see. But you make sure they're, they're authoritative sor sources, peer-reviewed, updated, uh, not just somebody talking about, you know, my cousin Billy had this problem and, uh, you know, it's just like, no, no we want, you know, the research could be, should be more on the medical side while you're telling the person's story. Uh, should I have at least two images. Those are up to you. Um, if they're not personal images, you're going to have to cite those. <coughs> they don't count as one of your three sources. Uh, all the MLA stuff, long quote, short quote, summary paraphrase, all the fun punctuation. Uh, you'll probably use figurative language naturally within the essay. Uh, and kind of avoid you. Uh, you might use it as a hook in the first paragraph. Uh, if you're talking about Alzheimer's, you start asking the reader, you know, have you lost, ever lost your keys? Or have you ever walked into a room, forgot why you went in there? And I'm going to be like, yeah. <laughs> I would say, well, then you're hopefully going to say, well, that doesn't mean you have Alzheimer's, but, you know, you know here's, here's my grandma's story or whoever you're going to talk about. Uh, no it, no gots, unless they're in a direct source. Kind of start uh, limiting to be verbs like is and are. Start using action verbs. Um, and again, uh, you may have to go through a couple of topics to get to the one you want to talk about. Uh, and again, double double check, make sure whoever you're talking about doesn't mind you sharing their story. <coughs> if it's not going to be you. Uh, and for kind of a condensed course like this, a shortened course, it might help to focus on something you want uh, on yourself, so you're not having to worry about you know communicating with somebody else just to get the information. Uh, but again, that's up to you. Some people, uh, they see the assignment and they're like, boom, I know what I'm going to write about. And other people are like, oh my gosh, <laughs> everybody's healthy in my family, oh no. Um, but surely something's happened somewhere at some time uh, that you can write about. If you get horribly stuck, you know, email me and we'll try and work through it. Um, but that's the basic essay. Uh, again, about half of it is you telling the person's story, the other half's the research. Uh, you know, we don't, I don't do a word count and, uh, you know, start, you know, drawing charts and graphs for the math, but uh, it's pretty obvious when you're not doing the research or if you're just re relying all, only on the research and not telling someone's story. And again, the idea of the essay is you're going to start with that person's story, you're going to end with that person's story, and as you go from the beginning of the story to the end of the story, uh, wh whatever time frame you're talking about, uh, that's when you start putting the research into the context of the story. Um, so start thinking about that. Uh, I'll go over a sample essay in a different video uh, so you can start seeing how the APA formatting works and all that. Um, 
but almost everybody's going to be kind of that a, a, a clear chronological timeline, and you're putting in the research while you're telling that chronological story of someone's uh, experiences there. Uh, and again, doesn't have to be life threatening. Don't feel like you have to have you know some horrible disease. Uh, I have I've had good ones on teen acne uh, and things like that. Kind of you know, there's all kinds of good stuff out there to talk about. Um, but if you have any questions, be sure to let me know, and we will talk to you later. Bye bye.